Many thanks to the Destruction Squad, Clash from the Servers, Sergeant Puppet Servers, Sea of Tools Cloud, Dallas, the Struggle Community, the Comic Crew Servers, Dots, Design Fool, Friendly, A Daisy Podcast, and the Settlement for making this video possible. Explosive damage is one of the most misunderstood mechanics in Daisy, with many players having no idea how it actually all works. So I'm going to be breaking down the real science behind explosive damage, showing you the low tier armor that can save your life, which stances can turn a deadly blast into a lucky escape, and the secret tricks that can help you survive when stuff goes boom. Far too many people believe that Daisy explosives fire out some sort of shrapnel in all directions like they do in real life, but for once in Daisy, it's actually pretty simple. So upon detonation, all explosives create a bubble of death around them, and if you're within this bubble, you will take damage. If that damage is enough to kill you, then you will die because it killed you, which is why Bro here survived. He is the furthest away, and he's also subscribed to Wobo, surviving with just 0.03 health remaining out of 100. If your attention span is better than that of a TikTok user, you may have noticed that this guy over here died, yet he's further away from our bro here, and that's solely down to the armor that bro was wearing. Not many pieces of gear in DZ protect us from explosives, and the ones that do, do not offer much protection, especially when compared to ballistic or melee protection that we have in the game, which protects us very differently too. To give you an example, I fisted a fuel pump, taking this much damage when it exploded in my face, damaging all of these body parts simultaneously, except for the brain hitbox because it cannot penetrate through the head, and for some weird reason, my feet were unharmed. Now if you were paying attention in class during my previous videos, you'd certainly know that taking damage to any body part on your character transfers that damage to your global health, with global health reaching zero being the main reason that we die from explosives in DZ. To protect your global health then, you can attach one of these helmets to reduce explosive damage taken by a huge 50%, which means a freaking welding mask and a skater helmet can reduce damage by 50% to the head and are as good as a ballistic helmet against explosives at any distance away from them. So compared to the fisting I did earlier, instead of taking 10 damage to the head, I now take 5 damage with this helmet, and as a result, take less global health because I took less head health damage. But don't get it fisted, the helmet reduces explosive damage by 50% for the head only, the actual protection of this helmet is 25% because it reduces global health damage by 25% with the helmet, and like I said, global health reaching zero is the reason that explosives will kill you in DayZ. So while we see a big 5-0 here, it's actually a lot lower, and in some cases, it's ridiculously low on some body parts, like the chainmail pants, for example, giving us what appears to be a beefy 35% protection on the surface against explosives, but like the helmet, that protection is only for one body part, and because the legs transfer damage to global health at a much lower rate, the actual protection these chainmail pants provide to reduce explosive damage to your global health is 2.3%, which is very far away from 30 percent protection. The chainmail chest and any of these vests here are going to offer you 10% reduction to global health which is the health that matters but these simply cannot be compared to the protection that the helmet provides even beating a chainmail and vest combo so even a plate carrier on top of chainmail is less protective than a helmet is so that means that a welding mask is better than a plate carrier against explosives. From the rest of the tests, the maximum protection we can get from explosives is around 38%, so this is the maximum we can get from all gear in DayZ, which for the Russian grenade means that you would die at 5 meters instead of 8 meters without any protection due to the way that damage drop-off works for grenades. Unlike ballistics, explosive damage drops off in a straight line so it's a linear damage drop off, then towards the end of its maximum range it will lose all of its damage potential rapidly. So basically, in most cases, this 32% reduction here means that you can stand 32% closer to an explosion before it would kill you. For this reason, and how Chainmail offers around 6% extra explosive protection, I would say that the helmet plus the vest combo is the best in the game. You don't need to get Chainmail, it's pretty rare, and the helmet is an absolute must when it comes to explosive protection, and being the easiest to acquire too, you can get a welding mask or a skater helm in a low tier area. If you didn't know, it's also worth noting that the 32% protection that the head plus vest combo gives us in Daisy will always be 32% protection because explosive damage, unlike all other damage in the game, does not reduce the quality level of your gear, but there are better ways to protect yourself from explosives. The best way to protect yourself against explosives in DZ is using world objects and structures as explosives absolutely suck when it comes to penetrating surfaces as seen here with the most powerful explosive in the game versus this flimsy garage door. 
This is the case for most surfaces in the game, explosives struggle to do any damage through most surfaces with some common exceptions being tents, bushes and netting and other objects like barbed wire. The only surfaces that might deceive players are these wooden doors in most houses as explosive damage seems to pass straight through these for whatever reason so don't expect wooden doors to protect you at all but at the same time wood surfaces like this that are thinner than the door can protect you so good luck knowing which is which. Metal doors on the other hand are just built different and even though there's a gap at the bottom of this door here, only my legs took damage in this scenario because all explosives in Daisy have what is called line of sight, allowing you to hide your critical body parts like your torso and your head from this explosive damage. This means only body parts in direct line of sight to the center of the explosive will take damage, then transfer that damage to your global health like I mentioned earlier, allowing you to survive some point blank hits to the face. Because explosives work in this way, you can even use your own body to protect your head hitbox from damage because the penetration of explosives is so low, so by crouching, looking away and looking down, your head hitbox will be covered in this case from the explosive or getting a squaddy to take one for the team to ultimately reduce how many body parts are in line of sight of the explosive and therefore how much damage will get transferred to your global health. Because your head transfers the most damage to your global health, hiding your head is absolutely critical if you want to survive an explosive, where hiding your torso is a distant second, but all other body parts, it does not matter how much damage you take to them. If you're taking damage to your legs, it's not gonna do much to your global health. It's also worth noting that facing an explosion does the exact same damage as facing away from it, even with a giant helmet on, because if the hitbox is in line of sight, that hitbox will take damage. Daisy does not calculate how much hitbox is exposed, it only calculates if a hitbox is exposed. Against items, explosives work differently too and also have different damage multipliers versus base structures, certain items and infected or animals. So it would appear, and this is just a guess, that all entities in Daisy have some sort of damage multiplier on them for how much damage they should take from explosives, with most items taking much less damage than players do, but base structures taking much more than players do due to the multiplier differences. To show you this in action, this test includes the ACOG on the left which has 50 health and a nade over here which also has 50 health, yet when explosive damage is applied, the grenade took more damage in this case. This appears to be the case for all explosive items in Daisy. they take extra damage for whatever reason, but with most other items in the game, they will both take the same amount of damage. So for example, a solid stone versus a soft animal pelt results in both of these taking the exact same amount of damage, even though they're made of different materials, and yet when you do this versus the wheel of a vehicle, that wheel takes a lot less damage because vehicle parts have a different multiplier than a stone does. That means that vehicle parts take a lot less damage from explosives. So much so that to destroy this car you will need 5 point blank grenades and the only reason it dies is because a fuel tank becomes ruined which has a lot lower health than the rest of the cars so it would take more if it wasn't for this fuel tank. So using explosives versus vehicles is a massive waste in Daisy and due to their low penetration you won't kill the players inside unless you're using plastic explosives which again is a massive waste. Now I have mentioned before that landmines work great against players and vehicles, they still do, but that's only because landmines are just weird, which I'll cover in another video. For now, it's a similar story versus animals, they can take a lot of explosive damage, much better to shoot these, and anyway, using explosives versus animals results in a lot less meat when you skin them. The only reason animals don't die so easily from explosives is simply due to their high amount of health. They have the same damage multiplier as infected, but infected have a much lower health pool. And it's sometimes worth using explosives versus several infected to preserve ammo or to deal with them quickly. And that pretty much covers explosive damage in Daisy and how it works, so we finally understand how explosive damage works in the game. And you can link this to anybody that says shrapnel or the word shrapnel. If you hear shrapnel and Daisy in the same sentence, link them this video and they will finally understand how explosive damage works. In the next video, I'll go over base building structure multipliers and how effective each explosive is against players and bases. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.